In this video, let's talk about the types of components. By now, you know that Blazor is a component-based application framework. Therefore, component is everything. And there are two types of component. The first type is called the rootable component. Sometimes it's also called the page component because the rootable component act like a page. And of course, the second type is non-rootable component, which is also sometimes called reusable component. Let's borrow this diagram that we used previously. So we have a user send a request through the browser to the web server. The web server is then using the map user component middleware to map that request to the root component. Then the root component uses the router component to locate the actual custom component to be placed inside the root component. Depending on which component the user requires, it then place that component inside the root component. So all of these components that I specify here, component one, component two, or component three, they are rootable component because the router component is able to locate them by using the URL. And then on this picture, what are non-rootable components? They are here. So non-rootable components can be used inside each one of these rootable components or can be even used inside other non-rootable components. So these are the two types of component. Now let's jump into Visual Studio and start creating these components so that we can actually understand them better. I mean, Visual Studio now, and now let's create a rootable component. So we need a rootable component to act like a page for us to manage our servers. Because like I mentioned before, this application is a server management application. So we're going to create a, a page component. And whether it's a rootable component or non rootable component, they're all razor components. So technically, they're called razor component, as I mentioned before. So I select razor component in Visual Studio. And because it's a rootable component, it acts like a page. I don't want to have this component as a suffix. I just want to remove it, and then I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it servers. Because this page is going to show us all of the servers for us to manage. So you're going to click on add, and then this servers.razor component is created. Now, what makes a component a rootable component? The single most important thing is the page directive at the top. So as you can see, all of these components are actually under the pages folder, which means they're all rootable component. And if you click on home, for example, it has a page directive right here. Go to weather, it has the page directive right here. So for us, we are going to add the page directive as well. And this page directive is the single most important thing that marks this component as a rootable component. And inside the double quotes, we're going to say slash and then followed by the relative path. So for us, I'm going to say servers is the relative path. Let's run the application. All right, our application is running. There are no links over here to link to our server's page. But what we can do is we can manually type in the URL. So we follow the relative path. I'm going to say slash servers. Hit enter. And we can see servers, which is the title. That's the only thing on this page so far. That means we're able to navigate to this server's rootable component. So again, what happens is that the root component uses the router component over here to find or locate our service component. And then it applies the main layout to it and it replaces this part of the HTML with our own component. Right? Well, our own component only has this one line of HTML with all of the uh, other HTML from the main layout. So this is, is the rootable component. So you only need to remember one thing for a rootable component, that what makes a component a rootable component is the app page directive. Now let's create a non-rootable component or reusable component. And for that, I'm going to actually create a folder. I'm going to call it controls. I like to call reusable component or non-rootable component controls, which corresponds to pages because there are controls in pages. You can call it, you can just call it components if you like, or anything you like. 
Okay, so under this controls folder, I'm going to add another razor component here. And this time, I want to keep the suffix here. And I'm going to call this server component. Click on add. This time, I don't need to add the add page component because we are not going to actually navigate to the server component. The server component does not act like a page. It acts like a partial view. So I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to just use a paragraph element here. I'm going to say server is online, something like that. And let's just close it. Now, since we created the server component, we can actually use the component inside another component. So where do we want to use it? Of course, we want to use it inside the server's component. So let's add a line break here, maybe another line break here, and then we can directly use the server component as a HTML element, right? So we can have a less than sign here, and then I'm going to say server component, and then use a greater than sign. And this references to our server component. As you can see that it, it includes all of the uh, namespace. And there are two ways to get rid of this. So the first way is just to delete it and then use a using directive right inside this service rootable component. So just do it right here. And now you can see the red squiggly line is gone. Right, we can do it this way. But I prefer the second way, which is place this using statement inside the imports component here. So we have this imports component, which is the global place or the central place where we can place our namespace. If I place this namespace inside the imports.razor component, that means all of the other components can reference the classes or the components under this namespace, right? Because I'm going to have many controls. So that's why I prefer to place this namespace inside imports.razor component so that in the future, when I create other components, I don't have to uh, reference this namespace every single time, right? So just, let's just keep it centralized. Let me close this and come back to this. So I have one server component, I can actually render as many server components as I want. So let's say I'm going to have two. And then let me go over here and restart the application. Now you can see that I have this servers rootable components and inside it, I placed two non rootable components. So in this video, you have learned how to create a rootable component. It's also called the page component. And the most important part is to use the add page directive to specify a relative pass. And then you also learned to create a non rootable component, which is also called reusable component. And then we are actually reusing the server component twice inside the server's component. That's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.